Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, the presentation will start shortly at 1030. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Energy Performance Program presentation. We'll get started in just a moment.
Good morning, everyone. There are quite a few people still signing in, so we're just going to give it a few more moments before we begin. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Save on Energy Energy Performance Program webinar. My name is Martin Shrikantha, and I will be your host today as we discuss the Energy Performance Program, what we call EPP. This webinar is being recorded, and it will be posted for your reference. For those of you who don't know anything about EPP, we're going to do a short overview of the program first and the theory behind whole facility energy savings. Then we will discuss the recent updates made to EPP. Before we get started, I did want to mention a few housekeeping items. You can ask questions using the question and answer feature. The chat is muted as well as your microphones. The team will see your questions come in, and at the end of the webinar, we will address them. If we do not get to your question today during the webinar, we will send a follow-up email with information regarding the program, the program resources available, program contact information, and a link to book a meeting with our technical sales advisors. There is one poll question that's going to come up on your screens right now. If you can answer it, it would be much appreciated. We will start our presentation in 30 seconds. We are going to start our presentation today with an introduction and update from Rob Edwards from the ISO. Thanks, Myron, and thanks everyone for joining us this morning. I'm pleased so many folks have joined us this morning. In fact, it's uh, 125 uh, at the moment to hear about EPP. Uh, perhaps it's for the first time or to learn about the enhancements we've recently made to the program. EPP has been available for the past several years under the Save on Energy program and has been a very successful program for us. We're hoping these enhancements that we're about to talk to you about will find that you'll find it as a, a good fit for you as you pursue your energy savings in your buildings. As you'll hear from Myron, EPP is a unique program and that is based on a holistic approach to energy savings versus say a retrofit program where the participant receives an incentive for replacing inefficient equipment with more efficient equipment. 
in EPP, you can absolutely do th that equipment retrofit, but you wouldn't submit a retrofit application. It would go through the EPP program and you would receive incentives over three years. You will also hear about the new EPP portal. We're very excited about this development, including a demonstration. It provides a straightforward online application process, which was previously done via email and then a manual technical review. We've heard from past participants and those who have opted not to participate in the program that generation of the baseline energy model was a burden for them. The EPP portal will take care of this. Before I hand it back over to Myron, I wanted to share some good news with you all. The ISO received a ministerial letter on February 9th, 2024, that asked the ISO to report back on options and analysis for a post-2024 framework and programs with the following areas of priority. And I'm gonna read each one of them, there are seven. Um, and this is a very encouraging news for us uh, at the ISO, Save on Energy, and for you in the market. So a more enduring funding framework that potentially looks beyond a four-year time frame to provide sustained market confidence. This will allow you to be able to um, forecast capital expenditures in your budgeting and know that uh, incentive programming will be there for a duration. Extended program offerings that reflect consumer and electricity system needs. Objectives and targets for beneficial electrification programs, consumer education and capacity building. Feasibility and design options for demand flexibility, reducing increasing or time shifting customer load and distributed energy resources. Enhanced involvement of local distribution companies, LDCs, to help meet customer and electricity grid needs. Additional programs for income eligible residential customers and indigenous communities. And finally, improving the participant experience through enhanced electricity and natural gas energy efficiency program coordination. So it's good news for us and for you. As this develops, please stay tuned. Uh, join us, uh, sign up to our business newsletter on the Save on Energy website. We will be sharing uh, news as it is made available to us. And with that, I hand it back to you, Myron. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rob, for the introduction and the very welcome news. We will now get into the content of the EPP webinar by starting with the different programs the ISO offers. The ISO offers multiple programs to the business, institutional, industrial sectors under the Save on Energy umbrella. EPP is just one of those programs and the focus of our presentation today. If you have questions regarding any of the other programs, we will be displaying contact information at the end of the presentation. Please feel free to reach out to us and we will do our best to get your answers to get your questions answered promptly. So why do we care for pay for performance? It's an innovative program concept where we look at all energy savings options within the entire facility. This means you aren't just restricted to capital projects or operational savings alone. You can do it all within a facility. There are certain project restrictions that we will talk about later in the presentation. We also want to talk about the benefits of participating in EPP with regards to the EPP portal and how it can help you. The portal will streamline the application process. We will discuss the benefits of the portal and how to use it later in this presentation. EPP takes a holistic approach to energy savings, including all of operational, behavioral, and capital projects. And you get paid on the performance of your energy savings. The incentive is 15 cents a kilowatt hour for energy savings during on-peak hours, and 4 cents a kilowatt hour for energy savings during off-peak hours. We'll discuss what those mean later on in the presentation. The program allows participants to set energy savings targets and implement efficiency measures that work for them to achieve savings over their baseline in a pay-for-performance model. We will cover some theory quickly so that the program concept is understood. The energy savings calculations work through the following steps. Upload electricity data so that we can develop a baseline model. Complete projects. You can do any projects that you want subject to certain eligibility restrictions. 
The baseline model predicts what your energy usage should be if the project never happened. Upload electricity data for the reporting period so we can see the measured energy usage. The energy savings are the difference between the predicted energy usage and the measured energy usage. You should you would sum the red arrows for each hour of the year to get the annual energy savings. For EPP, we look at the whole facility for energy savings, not just one individual project. You can see the whole facility boundary on the left side of the slide. You can see the difference in the boundary for having the boundary around one project on the right side of the slide. This is called the retrofit isolation approach. If you use the retrofit isolation approach, you would need to install a meter or use measurements and calculations for each project you do. While with the whole facility approach, you would only need one meter. The whole facility approach means you could do as many projects as you want within the boundary of the facility. Please note that on the slide in front of you, the energy savings would be coming from four different projects in the energy savings plan. Okay, let's get into the program details now. We are excited to announce that the participation requirements for EPP have been changed to allow for expanded participation and more facilities being eligible. Facility owners and or operators can participate in EPP. Any facility that is within the commercial, institutional, industrial, and multi-residential sector that is located within Ontario is eligible as long as it is a general service account greater than 50 kilowatts. There is no longer a minimum energy consumption requirement or a need to aggregate smaller facilities. If you have any questions regarding whether your facility is eligible or whether it would be a good candidate for EPP, please feel free to contact us. Our contact information is displayed at the end of the presentation. Please note that there is a commitment to participate for a period of three years, with an incentive payment being received each year for energy savings earned. The facility would need to save 5% energy savings from the baseline within two years. Additionally, we do need a minimum of 12 months of interval meter data for each facility. We previously mentioned that EPP has lots of flexibility for projects. Any capital projects, operational improvements, or combinations of the two are eligible. Please no, note, however, that there are three restrictions. Behind the meter generation, fuel switching, and projects that have received incentives from other ISO programs. For EPP, we have made multiple program enhancements. Firstly, we have expanded the eligibility for facilities. We have mentioned this in the previous slides that the minimum consumption requirements have been removed and facilities do not need to aggregate. Secondly, we have updated the incentive structure to add a two tiered incentive. The first tier is 15 cents a kilowatt hour for on peak hour energy savings. And the second component of the incentive structure is four cents a kilowatt hour for off peak hour energy savings. On peak hours are, def are defined as weekdays from June 1st to August 31st from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. that are not holidays. Off peak hours are all other hours in the year. Please note that the peak demand reduction incentive has been removed. Thirdly, one of the largest enhancements we have made is the automated application process. We have now implemented a program portal. The online tools within the portal will now do the baseline energy modeling for you, as well as provide you with energy savings and incentive calculations. The online tools can also provide benchmarking information as well as data analytics and visualizations for you to use in managing your facility's energy usage. The EPP portal workflow is simple in how it works. It has a three-step process which involves one inputs, two automated analytics, and three results. Now I will talk about a few of the details within those three steps. Let's start with the input requirements. You can see these on the left side of the slide. We need some basic information regarding the facility, such as the address and square footage. We will also need the electricity consumption information for the facility. Finally, while we are doing the review and verification of the energy savings, we will need an energy savings plan and a report to review. The portal will automatically pull the weather data based on the facility address provided. The portal will also have the benchmarking data set for the facility comparison integrated within it. These are the light blue items on the left side of the slide that are automatically provided by the portal. With regards to the results and information you get from the portal, you can see these on the right side of the slide. You will get EPP savings reports, benchmarking results, data analytics, and visualizations. 
This should allow you to make informed decisions with regards to your facility's energy usage and track your progress relative to goals. Please note that there will be additional development within the portal to release more of these features. We are now going to do a quick demonstration of the portal. It will take us a couple of seconds to start the demo. Hello, and welcome to this EPP portal guide. In this video, I'll be showing you how to navigate and complete EPP applications with this portal. You can access the EPP portal via the website energyperformanceprogram.ca. First, to create an account, press the blue Register for EPP button. Fill in the email you'd like to use and enter a password that meets the listed requirements. Fill in the password again and click on the Register button. You'll be redirected to your profile with a Confirm email button. Press it and you'll receive a confirmation email with a link that can either be pressed on or copy and pasted into your browser. Now, to finish up account creation, you'll need to enter profile details. Click on the top right drop down and select Profile. Here, you'll be able to enter your profile details. Do note that your email is pre populated with your sign up email and you will not be able to change it. Additionally, you must select your account role. There are two options Company Administrator and User. Do note that there can only be one company administrator per company. A company administrator is responsible for creating facilities, inviting other users, and uploading the signed participant agreement. Users are accounts that can access, upload, and perform data entry for facilities that an administrator account has given them access to. If you're not sure of which role you should select, please contact us and we can help you decide. Now that we have finished creating our account, it's time to view and upload the participant agreement. Click on the button to your left or the drop down in the top right. Here, you'll be able to view a copy of the participant agreement and upload a signed copy. Do note that only the company administrator can upload the agreement. Please ensure that you have fully read the participant agreement and have saved your signature to your copy. Please ensure that you have selected the correct file to upload as you'll be unable to change this file without contacting customer support. Now it's time to add a first facility. Once you've submitted your participant agreement, you'll be automatically redirected to the Facilities page, or you can select it from the drop-down on the top right. This is the Facilities Management page. To get started, we'll have to select the blue Add Facilities button. Here, you'll be prompted to enter your basic facility details, as well as your facility type. After filling out this page, you'll be allowed to enter more details about your facility, as well as upload energy consumption documents. Now that we've finished creating our facility, we can continue with our application. Do keep in mind though, that you can edit your previous responses by clicking the edit button under the section you wish to edit. Now it's time to add additional details to your facility. Here you're asked different questions about the heating and cooling technology used in your facility, as well as other general questions about the facility itself. Please remember to hit the save button in order to confirm changes. Next is the Facility Electricity Consumption tab. Here, you'll need to upload a file with your most recent facility electricity consumption that captures a 12 to 18 month period in order to establish a baseline. Only one file will be accepted and we encourage that you use an Excel or a comma separated value file. Next is your Facility Electric Utility Bill. This requires you to upload a recent utility bill in order to determine your eligibility. We recommend that you upload a PDF file, and once again, only one file will be accepted. You also have the ability, as an administrator account, to allow user accounts to edit your facility. Click on the drop down on the top right and select User Access. Here, you can add and invite users to edit your facility details and uploads. First, click on the blue Invite User button. Here, you can enter the email of the user that you wish to grant access to. If they have an account, they will immediately be able to access the facilities that you have granted them permissions for. If they do not, they will receive an email prompting them to create an account. Once a user has been added, you can grant and remove their access on a per facility basis, allowing you to have fine control on who can access which facilities. Click on the Manage Access button under either Participant Agreement or Facility, and you can check off whether or not they have access to these sections of your application. 
Now, I'm switching to a user account to demonstrate how the process works on this side. Here, you simply need to click Access Dashboard on the left or in the drop down menu on the top right, and you can see which companies and facilities you've been granted access to. To access a facility, simply click on the facility name, and here you can edit, add, and upload the details the same way an administrator account would. Finally, to finish your application, click on the Submit button on the right side. Please ensure that all information submitted is accurate and up to date, as after you press this button, you cannot go back to change your responses. Both an authorized user and an administrator account can submit the application. After you have submitted a facility, you may continue updating other facilities that have not yet been submitted. After the submission, our technical reviewer will develop the baseline for you and contact you for the next steps. If you have any questions or need further assistance, please contact EPB support at info at energyperformanceprogram.ca or 1-888-852-2440. Please give us a few seconds while we just switch back to the presentation. If you have any questions about the demo or how to use the portal, please feel free to contact us. We can set up individual demonstrations of the portal for you and answer any specific questions using a Microsoft Teams screen share. Now let's talk about the recap of the demo. So please note that to access the portal, you can access it via the Save on Energy EPP webpage or directly through www.energyperformanceprogram.ca. Please note that to sign up for EPP on the portal, you will need the following four things. An executed participant agreement. Please note that the PA execution should be done by an individual that is able to bind the company, and all facilities enrolled in the program will fall under this executed participant agreement. Secondly, we'll need some basic information about the facility, like the address, square footage, and type of facility. Thirdly, we'll need at least 12 months of continu contiguous elect interval meter data. And fourthly, we'll need a copy of the most recent electric utility bill. We take care of the rest. Please note important dates for EPP. Your facility will need to be approved for enrollment by December 31st, 2024. There are three annual paper performance periods, and the last date for the program is December 31st, 2027. I'm now going to discuss some common FAQs. Are you an existing Save on Energy program participant? Even if you're in the middle of a retrofit application or you have purchased lighting through the Instant Discounts program, your facility may still be eligible for EPP. Please reach out to us and we can see if you're eligible and what needs to be done. How do you choose between EPP and retrofit? This will depend on your objectives and your timelines. We've had this question quite a few times. Please reach out to us and we help and we can help you with some information to make your decision. How long does an application submission review and approval take for EPP? With the new portal, the application process has been streamlined greatly. You do not need to do the baseline en energy modeling anymore. If you give us the information we need, we can do it for you quickly. This means that the review and approval times have been reduced greatly. Is a new baseline model generated after each of the paper performance periods? No. The EPP portal generates a baseline energy model that remains valid for all paper performance periods. However, if there is an unforeseen change at the facility, this could trigger a non-routine adjustment. We will work with you to address these non-routine adjustments to your baseline. Is replacement of gas-fired equipment with electrical equipment eligible under EPP? We recognize that many organizations are reducing fossil fuels in an effort to meet GHG reduction goals. In order to not penalize participants for the resulting increase in electricity consumption, the ISO is allowing participants to make non-routine adjustments to their approved baseline model in accordance with EPP M&V procedures. I'm planning on installing solar panels at my facility to offset my consumption. Is this eligible under EPP? Savings associated with the installation of solar panels are not eligible to receive incentives under EPP as solar panels or other electricity generation equipment are not considered energy efficiency measures. However, use of this equipment would not make the facility ineligible to participate. How does the upfront pre-project incentive work? Once a participant's application is approved, 
The participant will receive an optional one-time advance of part of the anticipated performance incentive for each approved facility. The incentive is calculated as follows. The baseline energy consumption times 2.5% times 4 cents a kilowatt hour. Please note that the upfront pre-project incentive is not mandatory. You can choose not to take it. There are several resources available to you on the Save Our Energy EPP program webpage. On the EPP webpage, the participant agreement, program requirements, technical guides, user guide, and FAQs are all posted. If you do have any questions, please send us an email or call us. The contact information will be kept on the screen at the end of the webinar, as well as email to you after the webinar ends. We are now going to start the question and answer period, uh, question and answer session in a moment. Before we go to the attendee questions, we do have two more poll questions for you. The first question will pop up on the screen and we'll pause for 30 seconds to let you reply. Thank you for responding to the first question. Here's the second poll question. We'll pause another 30 seconds for you to reply to that one as well. We will start the Q&A session now. We will try and answer all questions applicable to the entire audience. If you have a question specific to your facility, we will reach out to you afterwards. Portia will now start the Q&A session. Thanks, Myron. Uh, we're seeing a lot of great questions coming in, and please continue to send them in. Uh, the first question that we have for today is, First question that we have is, do we have to be an EPP participant to use a portal analytics tool? Can we use them without signing a participant agreement? Robert Myron, can you answer this question, please? Uh, yeah, sure, Rob, do you want to go first? Uh, you go ahead. OK, uh, so to use the portal uh, to create any facilities, you first have to sign a participant agreement. Uh, so theoretically, yes, you'd have to be a participant in the program. Uh, to be able to use the portal. Great. Thank you. Um, our next question is, will the EPP program be extended beyond 2024, or will we only have until the end of 2024 to take advantage of EPP? Rob, can you can, please answer this? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, we have every indication that they're going to be a subsequent uh, framework. We're working with the Ministry of Energy on that. There's very, very good signs there, as I indicated at the uh, beginning of the session. So we expect that there will be. Um, and up in, as long as you get an uh, application in by the end of this year and it's approved, and it, as Myron indicated, it goes pretty quickly now, right? I mean, it can literally be done in less than a week, if not less, if we get everything we need, um, then you are offered a three year agreement, three performance periods. And and this this particular um, program, the 2124 EPP program wraps up at the end of 2027. So stay tuned as soon as we learn more um, about potential additional funding available and uh, additional uh, programming you at least can bank on EPP for the next uh, three years. Awesome, thank you. So Mustafa, I have a question for you. I have an existing EPP project that is almost at the end of year two and entering year three. Do I use the portal for year two submission or use a previous submission method via email? Thanks. Um, we recommend to transition from the legacy EPP to the new portal. Uh, we take care of the rest of the 
baseline transition and everything there, we're going to reach out to every existing participant for that transition. And if I can just add to that, Mustafa, thanks for the question. Um, one of the things that the additional thing that we've built in to make it easier for existing participants is that savings report. Previously, the participant would have to generate the savings report and submit it via email and then our technical reviewer uh, review it. And there may be uh, some time associated with that before uh, savings report is verified and the incentive is paid. Now we simply require the participant to upload uh, a year's worth of that contiguous interval data, as well as perhaps anything that's gone on in that facility within that performance period. And again, that savings report is generated by uh, the portal and uh, the, the Inerva team and sent to the participant for review. And then they uh, provide an, in, uh, an invoice to us and we get that paid. So not only is the baseline energy model created way more quickly to get into the program, the savings report is generated via the portal, saving the participant time as well. Thanks, Rob. Um, Asaf, I have another question for you. Um, and Rob, I think this is also a great question that um, you can add your input to. Are there changes to the EER or COP requirements? I'm gonna, I'm gonna address that one. Um, energy, um, energy performance program is different than the calculation of the coefficient of the performance or COP or EER. Uh, there is no interaction between these two. As long as uh, you have the eligible project, uh, you can uh, proceed with the EPP application. So having said that, uh, with the baseline, uh, uh, whatever is your existing COP or EER, you can participate and improve those COP or EER. Thank you. Rob, do you have anything to add? I have nothing further. Okay, perfect. Great. Um, so, Masaf, I have another question for you. In our experience, baseline is set by real-time submeters that can set the baseline and track performance, not billing utility meter data. Why change to utility meters? That's a great question. Um, so, uh, the program specify approved meter. There are two category of the approved meter. One of them by default is the LDC meter. The other is any kind of the submitter who has the accuracy of point plus minus 0.5%. So if you do have the submitter on the real time and uh, verify with the accuracy requirement, you can participate. But there are the third category there, we're going to uh, consider them uh, with the interaction with the ISO on a case by case basis, uh, mainly for the industrial application. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Mustafa. Uh, Myron, I have a question for you. Will existing EPP applications be transitioned over to the new portal automatically? And if not, is there an option to do so? Yes, yeah, so we have a transition plan uh, that we're implementing. So as Mustafa had mentioned earlier, uh, we will contact all legacy EPP uh, customers and work with them on their transi transition over to the new portal. We'll make it as streamlined and easy as possible for them. I would like to pop in on that question. Um, that's a That's a really great question, and there's two parts to it. One is to ease the transition. Um, to, to take the burden off of the user to create the savings reports for those who are already participating. But we do need you to enter into the latest participant agreement. Um, and we will be reach as a nerve, as Myra mentioned, we'll be reaching out to you and discussing that with you, set up a meeting and get that done. And because the verbiage of that new participant agreement talks a lot about the portal. So it's all positive. Uh, but we do need you to enter into the latest participant agreement. Thanks, Rob. Um, I do have another question for you. Oh, 
here we are. All right. Uh, the question asks, curious to understand about decarbonization and electrification. I understand this is an energy efficiency program, but what about GHG emissions? Yeah, I wonder if you, okay, we do have that as one of the FAQs in, and you'll be able to see that in the deck and online uh, and under our FAQs on the website. What is really interesting and unique about the Energy Performance Program is that we at the ISO see that that's happening. The decarbonization equals increased electrification, um, and that includes, of course, space heating and even EV chargers, et cetera. And what we're able to do is the, the intention is not to penalize you as you're pursuing your decarbonization goals. So what we're gonna be able to do is you'll be able to work with us, identify what those increase in electricity are as a result of your decarbonization, and we'll be able to do a baseline adjustment so you're not penalized. Thanks, Rob. Uh, Mustafa, I have a question for you. Is there still an annual incentive cap of 20% of the building's annual electricity consumption? Rob, do you want to answer that question? Certainly. Yes, there is. Um, we've had this program in market for about six, seven years, and um, very rarely have we reached that cap. It's, it's tremendous if you are able to achieve up to a 20% savings. Um, and if we've helped you do that through this program, we're ecstatic about it. And furthermore, if you're able to do that, we would love to talk to you about a potential case study so that uh, you may share with others uh, the success that you've enjoyed in, in your energy saving journeys and the role that EPP played in that. Mustafa, do you have anything to add? Um, no, that is fantastic okay. answer from Rob. So uh, okay. as a recap, we have about majority of the EPP participant, uh, less than 20%, more than 5%. Uh, these are the majority of the uh, historical EPP participant. And we have some um, like exceeding 20% uh, cap, uh, and we want to hear more about those projects in future. Perfect. Uh, so if I have another question for you, uh, can the utility meter installed provide hourly interval data for the facility? I don't see why not. Um, so the utility meter or any kind of solid state uh, power meter or electric meter can be installed and we're gonna, we just need the kind of accuracy to verify that accuracy with the participant. So we are very flexible in this in this program. I'd like to jump in on that as well. Um, the idea certainly behind the program is to jet, have a baseline energy model generated using, you know, 8,760 hours, one year of contiguous hourly interval data. And that is almost always through an LDC meter. Um, we've got hundreds of facilities in the program now, and that is generally almost always the way that these baseline energy models are generated. So, so as you'll see in the portal and what we've done traditionally over the years is you would access that hourly interval data through your utility and provide that, um, use that for your baseline energy model in the past. Now you're going to provide it to us and we're going to use utilize that to generate the model. So the, 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 the go-to, the base is that hourly interval data through the utility. As Mustafa indicated, I mean, there is some flexibility there, but you, but if you were to participate in the program, um, you would need, if it's not an LDC meter, you would need to install metering, which is eligible through the program, and capture at least a year of data in order for the model to be generated. So I really wanted to clarify that your go-to for your facilities uh, is the LDC hourly interval data. Uh, Rob, it was mentioning that um, 8,760 hours of the data or one year of the data is subject to the seasonality requirement. As an example, if you are you have a facility and the facility load is pretty consistent, uh, there is no up and down, uh, for example, for the summertime, uh, 
and you measure or your availability for the data is less than a year to establish the baseline mm -hmm. and the profile is pretty constant and uh, without any seasonality uh, on an exceptional basis we can work with you with limited availability of the data mm -hmm. to develop the baseline model I appreciate you clarifying that, Mustafa. We we do uh, have some flexibility, and um, that that's great. And so, if you think you fall into that category, uh, and you don't have an, a whole year of hourly interval data, do contact Minerva and the team and see if you can still be eligible to uh, participate. Great answers. Uh, I have another question for the wonderful duo of Rob and Mustafa. Um, the question is, how can, I, how can a commercial property with multiple utility accounts on site participate in EPP? Uh, Rob, can I get you to start that? That's interesting. I'm, wow, multiple utility accounts. So I'm thinking this might be a shopping center, for example. Um, yeah, so there's a couple things we've done in the past with shopping centers, and one is that a model can be built only for the common area. So that's one answer. Um, the other way would have to be an aggregation of those uh, of that data. And um, for that, I am going to default to Mustafa to see what your thoughts are there. Thank you, Rob. Um, so we, with that EPP portal in place, all you need to do is just provide us with the utility data and we take care of the rest. Uh, you just need to specify, for example, that utility is serving that certain area. So um, all you need to do is just uh, sign the participant agreement, provide us with the utility data that you have. And as a kind of short answer, uh, we're gonna provide the baseline model for you, and we're gonna we, we're gonna we're gonna proceed with the savings report down the road as well. So the same way you provided the data for the baseline, after the installation of the project or after each pay for performance, you're gonna need to provide us with the same electricity mm -hmm. consumption data, and that's it. So I, I'm gonna jump back in because I'm guessing now. Whomever asked that question, please contact Nerva. And, and and you can get into the, the nitty gritty. But my, my guess is that if it's a shopping center, you have a common meter plus tenants, but you want one baseline energy model for the whole facility, for example, if I'm right there, um, you know, we're going to have to work together on that because, you know, the portal, of course, will only allow you to upload one, um, one utility file, one, one interval hourly meter. So, um, Interesting scenario, and and certainly we've done it in the past manually. So please contact Inerva, and uh, and you know what else we'll do. And Myron, you were probably going to say this, but um, we're going to capture as many of these Q and A question answers and share it with the participants uh, afterwards. So uh, as we come up with the answers, we'll we'll get them to you. This will be an interesting one to share with the participants in the uh, in the webinar. Awesome, thank you. Great, Myron, speaking of Myron, we have a question for you. Are legacy applications subject to new incentive provisions? So that's a great question. Um, we understand that there is a difference between the legacy applications and the new, the new program, uh, most specifically with the two-tiered incentive and the removal of the peak demand reduction uh, incentive. Uh, it really depends on where your application is. If you haven't started yet with the with the reporting period, then there be there might be some flexibility there. But we'll need to understand your specific situation uh, to know uh, if you're being moved over to the new incentive structure or not. Rob or Mustafa, do you have any specific uh, details that you'd like to provide there? Yeah, I'd love to chime in on that. The the idea is that um, well, certainly I think we're at somewhere around forty percent. Uh, Mustafa, we don't need to get in too much more detail than that, but uh, of our existing participants, we're taking advantage of the $50 per kilowatt uh, incentive uh, because many of their models just couldn't go to an hourly model. It ended up being a daily model, and we saw that. And we so what we transitioned to was still peak, 
but it's energy consumed during those 384 hours, June 1st to August 31st. So it's beneficial um, for existing participants to transition over to 15 cents a kilowatt hour during that peak time. Um, so we'll help you through that transition. It is absolutely our intention to have you transition over from the previous participant agreement into the new participant agreement and benefit from that 15 cents a kilowatt hour. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, Myron Mustafa, I have a question for you. How are energy conversation con conservation. conservation measures proposed within the portal? Uh, Myron, can you start? Yeah, so uh, I think we mentioned a bit of this uh, in the slides, but didn't get into too many details. So to start with the portal, all you really have to do is sign the participant agreement. Uh, and then there's four things you have to provide. Uh, actually, three things after that. The address and some basic information about the facility, uh, the 12 months of contigu contiguous electricity interval meter data, and the utility bill. Now, how we figure out what you've done is while we're doing the review uh, of the energy savings calculations at the end of each year, uh, what we do ask you to do is just provide some details to us uh, about what you've done in the facility that year, and we do the savings calculation and the savings report for you. Uh, so you will have the ability at the end of each year uh, to tell us exactly what you've done uh, within the within the portal. Mustafa, like would you add, like to add to that? Yeah, I'd like to add. Yeah. Um, so in 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 uh, short in future, you're going to see lots of uh, visual or mm -hmm. uh, uh, charts from the chart, yeah, from the portal. Um, this is just one example. Uh, you need expert to interpret. Uh, you don't need expert to interpret that those charts. As an example, when you see a significant um, significant increase in the consumption in a specific period, that shows, for example, those uh, equipment. As an example, during the summer, chiller has some malfunctionings or some problem providing the cooling load for you compared to the other similar buildings that doesn't have that uh, increased consumption uh, because we are normalizing uh, the consumption from the outdoor air temperature so you can easily compare your cooling load with other uh, similar facilities this is just one example so as simple as that one you can figure it out a list of energy conservation measure uh, by just looking at the report, at, at the report from the portal. The other possibility there is majority of the uh, optimizations comes from the set points or uh, optimizations in, in, in your facility. Uh, as simple as uh, when you have a less occupancy rate, um, you see no change in the consumption or the uh, normalized uh, consumption doesn't show any change there. So you're going to go back and um, either tune those setting point or try to figure it out other optimization or behavior uh, possibilities as an energy conservation measure. I would like to jump in for a moment here as well, because I don't know how well we've covered this in the presentation, but so three of the major things about the portal. One is that the generation of the baseline energy model will be done through the portal, no longer a requirement of the participant. At the end of the year, the participant simply uploads a year's worth of energy data, tells us something different about the facility. We generate the savings report. But the other thing we haven't talked about too much, and it's going to be available soon, is an interim savings summary. The idea is now at any point, be it a week, a month, a half a year, whenever you want, you can upload your energy data for that facility. And we're going to generate visualizations and analysis showing you the results of your effort. So two major things can happen. One, you could say, see the results of your activities and projects that you've installed and say, hey, look at the QSUM. Look what we've achieved. Terrific. But you know what else might happen? It may not be nearly as much as you'd expected, or perhaps it's been an increase. And this will quickly enable you to say, ask questions and find out what's going on in that facility. So we're really excited about that. Um, I want you to stay tuned on that. And when that is available, um, we're going to be introducing it in the portal. There's still the potential for that to be done uh, manually. Uh, if you want to reach out to a nervous team and, and talk about, hey, could I email you this stuff and you generate these for me? Uh, there's a potential there. 
So if you are interested in that, uh, let's pursue that um, and contact Anerva for that. Perfect. Thanks, Rob. As Myron mentioned, we will be sharing all the contact details um, at the end of the presentation. I think there's only time for one more question. So Mustafa, can I have you ready to answer this one? Uh, the question is, does baseline period need to be immediately before the application or can it be for the last calendar year? I would say it depends on the case by case basis. Um, normally, what we require to establish the baseline at the most recent energy consumption. Why we need the most recent energy consumption to calculate or establish the baseline as accurate as possible. In some cases, we may have some difficulty collecting the most recent data, as an example, the missing data or malfunctioning of the meter, uh, we are able to shift the baseline on a case by case basis. So I would say if you have some difficulty, providing the most recent data. We are here to help you with the baseline period for, for, for the definition of the baseline period, as long as you sign up on that portal and send us your inquiries. Uh, would anyone else like to add anything to that answer? No, nope. all right, perfect. So, I believe that's all the time we have today. All the resources will be posted on the EPP webpage. I'm just going to pass it back to Myron to close out this morning's presentation. Thank you very much for attending today. Uh, to everyone who did, well, we understood and we're very ecstatic that uh, we had so many people join. Uh, the contact information is displayed on the screen and it will be emailed to you. Uh, so please look for a uh, an email from us. Uh, to recap the webinar as well as the resources. Thanks again for attending.